Hello, you cool ranch Doritos homunculi. Welcome to Off the Leash Volume 16. That was a very Jim Sterling esque intro. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of his videos recently. Um, today we're back in Battlefield 1. Um, apologies for those of you with the 16 by 9 monitor who's watching this because it's going to be letterbox because um, I'm not I'm not changing the resolution. I am way too used to 75 FPS ultra wide <laughs> on this game. And uh, actually, even bigger apologies to those that are watching in ultra wide because I don't render the videos in ultra wide. It's going to be letterbox and uh, the other box, so you'll have to use a plugin if you want to watch it, not looking idiotic, or just use a um, uh, you know window it or whatever. I am going ham right now. Um, we are playing the back to basics playlist on here, which is the game mode I've been asking for. Um, well, I would say since the game came out, but honestly, since my childhood because i've always wanted world war one real bolt actions and you know that sort of combat um obviously it's not perfect there's no tanks in this game mode as far as i know it's just armored cars and vehicles and you still get you know some of the overpowered stuff with um uh you know the different classes but uh it's still really fun and uh i really like this game mode quite a bit so we are british with the smle one of my favorite weapons of all time bolt action rifle especially um I like the 03A3, I like the Mauser, but uh, this one's probably my favorite in my dad's personal collection of rifles. I have, we have the, uh, this is the Mark III, I think, I think we have the Mark, not the Jungle Carbine, but the one before that. Good, good weapon, really good shooting. Um, so yeah, we are back in, uh, once again in another game that we've already played <laughs> on this series, because, not that I'm running out, I got plenty of games I've not played on here, but the type of stuff that I enjoy playing and that I can, you know, use as background, um, are running thin, so that's why I want to come back in here, and I said incorrectly at the beginning of the last video that I never played Halo 5 on, uh, off the leash, but damn, I'm doing really good as far as kills go, um, but I had, and I corrected myself, so, uh, yeah, so, you know, no tanks, which is okay, um, so I figured we'd be back in here since it's been a while. We will be re revisiting a couple more games on Off the Leash as they roll around since it's been a few months since we've seen them on here. And revisiting on the channel. Um, where is my squiggly cup? There it is. Mm. Ah, much better. So as always, we're procrastinating stuff um, playing this because I, I tried to do some homework earlier. And um, it involves an Excel spreadsheet that is from a government website. So as you can imagine, formatting was terrible. I about rage quit. Um, until I realized that they had formatted the numbers as text, and so nothing was showing up properly in a um, scatter plot. Oh, there we go. Um, so I figured, yeah, let's take a break from that <laughs> and, <laughs> and uh, talk about video games. Uh, before we get into recent news, I figured I'd, I'd cover some some stuff I've done on the channel and um, some reorganizations and, and that sort of thing I've done. So for those of you who who check out the you know the very front page, you might have noticed that. Uh, reorganized a couple things, put like the best of playlist and featured rather than its own little separate module and replaced it with trial by fire uh, by itself. And that's where we hold, I, I put all of our trial by fires from past, including the singles like Modern Warfare um, and the playthroughs with Dark Souls and Walking Dead that Logan, Ashen, and I were a part of. I also added a couple other playlists in there including Volgar the Viking and The Evil Within, which, you know, old older series we've done. Um, oh, there we go. Good head shoes. Um, but they weren't initially trial by fires, but they kind of turned into that because they were, you know, caused the player to rage in some, some sense. So I think looking back, we probably should have realized they were going to be that. Um, so I figured let's, you know, let's uh, go ahead and give it the recognition it deserves. So I did that, changed all the thumbnails to a more um, homogenous art style with possibly the nastiest looking font I've ever seen in my life, and it's perfect. Um, so that's what we're doing. And the reason I went through all that effort is because, um, as I mentioned at the end of the last Off the Leash, and if you want more details for what I'm thinking, you can go back and watch the last 15 minutes or so of that. Um, and I'll, I'll make an update video, if, you know, there's other big changes, but Ashton and I are talking about bringing back that name with a couple games, um, including revisiting some stuff that we've already done. We'd probably play a little bit of more Volgar, um, cause I did finally break down and go ahead and buy a whole year worth of Xbox Live so I can play all my games for gold. 
Um, it's much as I hated to, but I figured it was like, dude, you're spending that much on Legend of Zelda by itself. You'll be able to play all this other stuff for a year. That'll give you plenty to do on the in the off seasons. And uh, it's just, you know, I, I waste $60 in a month, <laughs> way more than just that. So I figured, yeah, screw it. Um, so we'll probably return to that as well as a couple other games we had in mind. So Trial by Fire is probably going to come back. And so I figured I would reorganize the channel and um, show that off. And uh, we got we got a couple other good ideas for, for playthroughs. Um, trying to get, you know, caught up on the channel and a little bit ahead. Any, anytime I try to get ahead in one thing, I get behind or barely on top of it on another and that's um not behind in school but it's going to get it's going to get rough here in a couple weeks and uh you know just other random shit taxes i know are going to come up soon it's fuck adult adulthood sucks dick dude um and other than that um i guess before we get into gaming news i've been playing i've played quite a bit of this you know when we get a full a full squad going uh generally we can get four or five uh there's three of us in in this house that play it and then one other easily and two others not too hard and um so we can generally get a full squad a lot of times had a lot of fun this map especially this is giant shadow the dlc map um and i, I chose to play this game because it, it is in the news um so yeah i've been playing that almost done with skyrim not quite but you know a few more hours i think i'll i'll be satisfied you know within another eight to ten or so um I completed Dragonborn to the extent that I'm happy with. I got all the black books, got everything there. Uh, Dragon Priest mask, all that shit. Oh man, I really wanted a headshot. Um, do have a couple other things I could do, but most of the side quests I care about. Like I didn't get the Death Brand armor, but I don't really care. Um, I just wanted some of the the quests that I haven't done in in a long time, uh, in almost five years at this point. Oh, wrecked. So. Uh, Done with that on the Soul Cairn and uh, Dawn Guard doing some other radiant quests. So I'm almost finished up with that and I've been playing a lot more Gears 4 here recently. Um, somewhat as background, you know, if I'm watching videos or stuff, but uh, getting use out of my Xbox Live, trying to get ranked in all core modes. It's, it's fun. It is good. Um, I don't like it as much as Ultimate Edition, but it's still a good time. And I finally got all 50 waves done in one match. We got on a play on PC on that one because I can't stand the 30 FPS. Uh, for for Gears of War anymore, so we got on uh, Clock Tower, which is a remake. They added that Blood Drive, all kinds of new maps. Also, look out for Gears; that'll be coming back on the channel um, relatively soon. I do plan on doing another session of that, that and Horde probably. Um, but yeah, we finally got that. Had a good team on normal, so knocked out a couple more achievements and having a good time on that. So that's been uh, that's been gaming for me. Ooh, got a pretty sweet amount of credits there. Check that out. War bonds, they're different in every fucking game. Ten seventy. It's equivalent to the GPU I have, more or less. Um, so yeah, I chose to play this game and uh, not Gears of War, even though I've been playing that um, a little bit more on my own here recently, because Battlefield 1 is confirmed to get new DLC uh, paid this time in uh, the month of February called They Shall Not Pass. Um, it includes the Howitzer, which is cool, considering we're going to Howitzer Battery, you know, being able to actually use it as a stationary weapon. So um, obviously one of my favorite stationary big cannon guns of all time because we're still using it uh, as stationary weapons like such. Obviously, they're a little bit more modernized, but not much more, um, as well as uh, in AC-130 gunships and stuff. Uh, we'll also be able to play as the French Army. Um, there's a few different maps, uh, including Verdun Heights, which I'm pretty pumped about. Uh, a couple fortresses, like a fortress map looking thing, and a uh, Trench Raider Elite class where you'll go around with basically, a, I think it's like a spike club and um, maybe a shotgun or something, but you know, another heavily armored Elite class to add in the mix, which is pretty cool. Um, I've not watched trailers, I've just seen stills <coughs> of it, and um, I think I'll get it, though. Um, I did not buy premium for Battlefield 4, and I'm glad I didn't after getting everything for free anyway, but um, this is a game I feel like they're adding substantial content. Now, could you argue that the French Army should have been there in the get-go? Yeah, because I did. Um, it's about World War One, but it's also not the most realistic World War One experience anyway, so yeah, I mean, it's kind of annoying, but, you know, I don't care, so... They're adding, you know, maps and stuff. I think I think that there's plenty of vanilla content in this game to justify its price. Um, so that's why I feel like supporting it. 
and I think I would get my money out of it. So I'll probably buy a premium for this one. Stuff like Gears 4, you know, they're adding like, you get skins and that kind of shit, but they also already added plenty of maps. You just get them a couple weeks later than um, the people who have the pass, which is fine because I don't, you know, play Gears of War religiously anymore, uh, especially 4. I don't ever see myself playing that as my main game. It's been fun as an off game, but um, so... This game, though, yeah, I'll probably buy premium just for that. Um, there was no reason to until now, but, uh, you know, a decent DLC every two to three months, that would get me back into this game. And, um, you know, I've already got well over a dollar an hour of entertainment out of this thing. So, you know, spending $50 more, no doubt I'll get that because I already, you know, I put well over 100 hours, probably 120 into Battlefield 4. And I still don't feel like I got my money's worth, you know what I mean? Even paying 60 um, this didn't have that much fun in the game, I guess because it was such a similar experience to three. Um, but I don't know. I don't know really what my what my issue with that game was, but I sucked at it. <laughs> uh, I still do. Yet this game I'm pretty good at, and I don't. I don't know. I just never. I never got into it. But this one, this one I did, and because EA has said this is going to be our last Battlefield for a couple years, um, that gives me more incentive to spend some more cash on it. So I'm pretty. I'm pretty excited about it. And um, I look forward to what else they can do. I feel like they're, um, you know, World War One was not U.S.'s fight. We kind of came in at the end and was like, all right, fuck it. You dragged us into it. Fine. And uh, the French basically won the war for us anyway. Um, then we won the war for them in, <laughs> in World War Two, so evens out. But um, I feel like there's a couple, you know, there's only two maps where you play as Americans, Argonne Forest and uh, Ballroom Blitz. So... I feel like uh, they could add a couple more for U.S. faction. That would be cool. Uh, definitely, you know, a French DLC is definitely warranted. Italian versus um, Austria, Austria Hungary is good. I think they could use maybe one or two more maps total uh, at the end, just to you know represent the scale of their fight. Um, yeah, that's. I think that's pretty good. So I look forward to seeing what they can do. I don't know what all other weapons they, they'd be adding. Um, they need an, a regular O3 A3. And as far as I know, it's only in this game mode. And I really hope we get an American um, side because I, I want to see it. I never played American as this, but you can't get a regular O3 A3 in this. It's only the experimental and scope versions, um, which is very strange. So hopefully they add that eventually and you know we'll, we'll see what else they got. In terms of uh, DLC weapons, but I'm I'm just as excited for vehicles and maps. So, very cool. Mm -mm. Squiggly cup. Um, other thing recently is that Gears of War Four is getting social and uh, social crossplay with PC, I should say. So that's permanent. There was a beta playlist for a while, and um, I played it on both PC and console. Did similarly on both i don't feel like one side has an advantage over the other gears of war 4 especially is a weird game in terms of being balanced for both play play size because you know there i feel like there's a significant chunk of players like me who are playing on pc with a controller because it's a third person shooter uh the only advantage i see to having a mouse is that ooh, there we go the shotgun encounters take a little bit more time because of that accuracy issue with controllers. Um, but if you're good at dodging and you're good at movement, which is mainly what the game is about when it comes to engagements, oh God, two health, I feel sorry for you, son. Um, then you'll probably win over someone with a keyboard if you're better than them at movement anyway. And I can't move worth a shit on keyboard. I can play the campaign good, um, but multiplayer, I, I can't get my wall dodges and all that going without my A button and um, analog sticks. So I prefer that. Um, and because of that, I feel like there's a few people that feel that way. And because of the nature of the game, um, crossplay works fine. And especially for a social setting where there's no ranks involved. So yeah, I'm really happy about that. That means that um, when I do get ranked in all the playlists, and I'm just doing that for a five-point achievement, which I don't know why I give a fuck about achievements in that game. I'm never going to complete it. Um, I can re-up once, but seriously, 4.0 and the other, like, re-up 10 times is, like, 300 gamer score by themselves, so, 
my ceiling is like 700 points <laughs> for a retarded amount of effort. Like, I have... 52, 53% of achievements in that game, and I only have like 280 gamer score. It's awful. Um, the Coalition really was a dicks about this game for achievements. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I do look forward to being able to hop on my PC and play at max settings on multiplayer again because I've been playing on Xbox One uh, a lot for multiplayer and um, you know still having a pretty similar experience, so that's pretty good. Uh, speaking of Xbox, Xbox Scorpio, some specs are starting to come out a little bit more definitively for it. And after Microsoft mocking the PlayStation 4 Pro for not being able to run games at native 4K with doing a lot of checkerboarding stuff and only a select few being true 4K, uh, and even at the end they're 30 FPS and the settings are so low that they don't even matter. Like, why would you waste 4K at low settings? Like, it's... I would take 1080p Ultra any day, especially at 60 FPS. Um, but after mocking them for d pulling that shit, they are pulling the same shit. Um, some people did a little bit of math, um, and of course, you know, teraflops, teraflops, and all that isn't the same. But I think a little bit more specific information released on the um, RAM the throughput of the GPU, and it's going to have to do the same thing. There's going to be a lot of checkerboarding 1440p upscaled games on Xbox Scorpio. Is that the worst thing in the world? No, but don't mock someone else when you're doing the exact same thing. Um, you know, for someone in the console market, it's not that big of a deal, I don't feel like. 90% um, of people, 99% of people still have 1080p TVs. A lot of people still rocking 720. You wouldn't think, but there's quite a few that had the 768p TVs. Um, so, I would say if you did splurge on a 4K TV, you'd be happier to have something that's close rather than nothing. Um, you know, it looks better than a blurry 1080p image. But I'd say there's a lot of other people as well that are only on 1080p TVs, and as long as you can do the performance boost stuff like you can with PS4 Pro, it'd be worth an upgrade or worth buying into the console for the first time. But still, don't mock the fucking competition <laughs> when you're doing the same thing. Oh boy, where are they at? Just a uh, little, little irony there, I would say. Um, but they're also going to have to nail the price point on that thing, and, uh, and considering the, you know, what they've done in the past, PlayStation 4 launched it, $100 cheaper because they threw in the Kinect um, and then coming in at roughly, you know, 10, 15% better performance for multi-platform games. Um, I could see Scorpio being significantly more powerful than PS4 Pro so they could try to make up for their losses earlier in, the, in this generation. But I can also see them pricing it, um, you know, disproportionately higher as well. So I fully expect Scorpio to be a $500 console when it comes out. Pro possibly $600 by the time everything is said and done. But, um, you know, I'm not buying it. I don't give a shit personally. But I think, I think it's going to be a rough uphill battle for them. And it's going to end up simmering out again just like it did earlier in the generation when, you know, eventually you end up with PlayStation 4 and Xbox One combos that are now $250 bucks for the... Um, the base models coming with a couple, you know, a game or two, um, and then up to three, three fifty for one terabyte and a couple decent games and maybe an extra controller. So kind of dumb that they're, um, going down the exact same path after criticizing the competition for going down said path. Um, so I don't know, like I said, I think it's a stupid fucking idea in the first place. If they would just put that in the current generation consoles, um, and charge a hundred bucks more for them, they would have still broke even and made a shit ton more on games. Um, I get they're trying to not to lose money on everything, but god damn it, man. You, like, that's why I like Nintendo. It's why I'm excited for the Switch. Yes, it's like 20% to 30% less powerful than the Xbox One. It's also like a tenth of the volume, and they never say they're trying to make AAA, you know, experiences. They never say, well, oh, well, you know, we're pushing the... We're pushing what's possible with graphical power and fidelity and whatnot. No, they just make fun games. And yeah, Zelda's going to run at 30 FPS, but I don't really give a shit because they never come out and say that's our goal is to make, you know, 1080, 60, next-gen gaming when these piece-of-shit consoles came out and said that, and they're nowhere near close. <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's just funny to see 
we're going to look back on this generation as just a clusterfuck. I have a feeling in 10 years um, it could quite possibly lead to Sony and Microsoft getting shit on by Nintendo, the next generation, uh, for, you know, certain audiences, I feel like. We'll see. Come on. Oh, you bastard. I don't know why my mouth is so dry today. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's that should be interesting. Um, in the same vein of Xbox, Halo 5 is finally getting those classic helmets that they teased a while back for Monitor's Bounty. Uh, it's still technically part of Monitor's Bounty, I think, and I don't know if it's going to, you have to buy them as a separate pack or if they're just going to be sort of, you know, throw in and silver and gold packs and stuff. But um, I definitely want a couple of them because they're from Halo 3 and Halo Reach. So, like, uh, EOD from Halo 3, um, the Halo 1, or Halo 1, Halo Reach Recon prototype armor. Um, what was it called? Was it the CQB in reach i don't know because they added that eventually there was another like i think it was cqc cqb was the halo 3 big fat helmet and then cqc was the skinnier pilot looking helmet but there's a bunch of them that they're adding from you know in terms of classic stuff which i'm pretty excited about um so that's coming very ooh, that, oh, oh can we get a oh god oh that was almost nasty almost like a quadruple but uh yeah that's coming on february 9th um, I'm assuming it'll probably be like a $5 standalone microtransaction if you want to buy it. Otherwise, it's going to be thrown randomly in the mix. And, um, you know, as much as people want to shit on microtransactions in that game, I don't think they did it too badly as, for, as far as, you know, you, you're locked down to one game mode where you can use guns and shit that you get and weapons and vehicles. And, of course, you can carry over to Warzone Firefight now, which why you would spend premium currency on that. I'm not quite sure. Um, then the rest is aesthetic. You don't have to spend it. Um, I wish they'd have done more level unlocks as well. You know, like, you know, there's like 10 or so sets that you get no matter what, and then the rest is random, but I'm I'm happy with the armor I got, you know, in the game, so I'm not terribly upset about it. I think the way Gears of War 4 is handling it is awful. Um, you don't get nearly enough scrap for what you need to unlock shit, uh, whereas I feel like you do in Halo 5, and um, that was garbage. Um, and because of that, I have literally one unique character on each in each faction that I like. I got the regular gear soldier on the cog side, and I got a white version of like the grenadier on the um, the swarm side. So a little bit different than having like 50 plus cool looking armor permutations. There's definitely a fine balance to that kind of shit. So overall, though, I'm not criticizing them. I they don't need to get any worse about it. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I'm, I'm pretty lenient for aesthetic, uh, microtransactions, um, cause they don't really affect the game and it's just something to give the artists, you know, it gives them something to do. So, oh, thank you, sir. Uh, because, you know, when the artist is done, generally, oh, there we go, the, uh, the game has, you know, when they're done, the game still has quite a bit of in time to go, you know, there's plenty of stuff to, you know, fill in, blah, 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 but, um, you know, that doesn't mean that they aren't sitting on their ass at some point when there's bug testing and finalizing of code going on, so I'm fine with, you know, aesthetics in, in that form or another. What the fuck, dude, did you see that? I don't know how I missed that. Did I, like, soldier flinch at the last second? <laughs> that was pretty embarrassing. Uh, yeah. So, I kind of feel the same way with this. Like, the, all the weapon skins, I'm sure some of them are maybe community idea generated, but the rest of them are just, it's the developers doing that. So, cool. Keep someone employed, and they're able to make some cool-looking skins. At least some of them, you know, <laughs> once you get past the white tier. Come on. Come on, get me up here eight meters away. I love when they slowly get closer to you, and, and then they just stop, and they move around, and oh, I think he's got me. Look at, there we go. It's always funny when your body is like 20 million miles away from where it should be. Come on. God damn it. We'll just sit here in our pizza ruin. I know it says pausa. Oh boy. That was fire. Oh good, we finally got a train. I generally never play this game mode on Conquest. It's usually uh, 
usually uh, dom domination or pigeons, because fucking pigeons is the best game mode in here. Oh, oh god, it's a cluster. It's a cluster. Just start, start swinging. That's fine. That's okay. Uh, other video game stuff. I've uh, been watching one of my favorite YouTubers play Resident Evil Seven. Um, I mentioned it last week, coming out and coming out to pretty, pretty good reviews, and um, <clears throat> I can totally see why. It's Outlasty, but it's also, oh, you bastard! It's revitalized the series, and, and but in the same way, it's kind of gone back to its roots, but just modernized, you know kind of sticking in the one the one house, you know, the Haunted Mansion idea and backtracking and um, really good characters, really fleshed out. It's a, it's a hell of a game. And even though I've seen it played, I might like to play that eventually, especially if it goes on games for gold like Outlast did. So, um, yeah, I'm glad that it's good because the past few has sucked dick. I would, I would argue ever since 4, they've sucked. <laughs> um Five, I never got, like, there was a pretty big cult following for Resident Evil 5, and I did not understand it. Um, four was a game changer, but then they took it, it's kind of like Modern Warfare. It was like, Resident Evil 4 was the game changer, and then they ran it into the ground, so, it's unfortunate. Oh, there we go. Love that. Eat grenade. Oh, 1911. That's a bad thing about that Luger. It always loses to a big old 45. But yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's good. And i um, seen some good reactions, <laughs> you know, when watching people play it. Um, so I can, I can say that unless something major happens with... I don't think Hideo Kojima's project's even coming out this year anyway. But unless something major happens with that, that would be getting my horror game of the year. Um, at the end of this year, more than likely, we'll have to see. But um, I was—I'm impressed by it. I thought it was a fucking shotgun for a second. I was really confused. At least we're—we're we're still uh, on top or close to top. I'm gonna sh fucking change squads if possible because um, a three-person squad isn't exactly fun. Yeah, look how many squads we have, people. We need to do something about that, please. Where, um, and I also believe I want to start scouting people as a scout, you know, as one does. And I'm going to try those impacts because I'm a little girl. Um, other recent stuff is For Honor and Halo Wars 2 both have betas going on. I know Halo Wars 2, uh, For Honor might be over by the time this video comes out. But, um, I have interest in Halo Wars 2. I don't think it's going to be a day one buy for me, just like Halo Wars 1 wasn't. Uh, I've got too much other shit I want to get to in the meantime. But, uh, zero interest in For Honor, and I'm playing neither of the betas. Um, For Honor has such a cool concept, and I was so interested in it when it, when it was out, because I was like, oh, this could be a really fleshed out Chivalry Deadliest Warriors game. Um, so I like the concept of Deadliest Warriors, but it's still a chivalry game. And chivalry started out as being pretty decent, and then they changed the hitboxes and everything. It's just like casual... Re oh, wow. That's not working at all. Um, then it went to ridiculousness. The shovel's brutal. Um, and it's fun to screw around in still, but it is no... You know, it's nothing to take seriously. Um, so when I saw For Honor, I was like, oh, wow, this could be something. And then I saw Ubisoft at the end, and I was like, well, shit, there goes my hope. Um, and indeed, it's basically Rise, Son of Rome. There's like two or three different abilities each class, you know, each faction can do. Um, but other than that, it's hack and slash nothing special. Like, I, I don't know why people are really excited about it. Um, AK-47 versus AR-15, depends, what are you asking? To buy? Or which one I'd rather be stuck in in a swamp with? It's very important context to that question. Um, but yeah, I, I just do not give a damn about that game. So, it's unfortunate because we're few and far between on historical Viking games. And I love me some, um, you know, some Norse mytho mythology. And uh, it's kind of why I bought... You know, I was interested in Rise Son of Rome. I was like, oh, you know, it's not realistic, but at least, you know, there's some history going on, and this could spawn a 
a genre. You know, this could this could spawn some some decent games if this you know gets a lot of interest and in, you know them touting it as a worthy launch day. Oh my god, I didn't even notice that was an enemy. I bet you guys are screaming at me right now. Um, at least I got him. That's what matters. So nothing happened with that. You know, we have no historically accurate Viking game. Close thing to we have on that is Witcher and Skyrim and however you want to, you know, role play yourself. You want your own custom character. But, um, besides that, no historically accurate medieval or those type of games. I think, uh, kingdom come is still, you know, being worked on. I'm interested in that, but it's, it's sad for those of us that don't want, you know, like a real sword and board game. That's not all magical and, or has gone down the shitter. Thank you, sir. Ah, oh, damn, this is dire straits. I need to start using that like a smart person. And that's that's not very helpful. I hear movement here. Okay, I think we're actually okay. But um, yeah, that's that's one of those games. It's like Far Cry. I pick up on sale. I enjoy playing them. They're kind of mindless. Oh, thank you, sir. Squat XP boost. What a bro. Um, for honor is another one of those, like, you couldn't pay me a thousand dollars to probably play that. Unfortunate. Um, I'm still, I'm still holding out a bit of hope on Wildlands. I don't think it's going to be amazing. I think it's going to be very much like the Division. The, the concept of the Division is what, um, made me not really care about it. It's more of like, bullet spawn it's like destiny in a modern setting which makes no sense um i'm hoping that wildlands isn't like that because it's more of an op you know it's not a mmo type game um but it could turn out to be that way i don't know uh there is a beta sign up i'm not participating in it i figure i'll just watch it and let that determine whether i'm interested in the final product or not but um I, like i said i've been asking for that type of game for a long time of Oh, god damn it. I forgot. See, my iron sights on all my weapons are set up like target sights like that to where you hold it right below where you want to hit and then it shoots and not cover them up. Apparently, this is a cover-up game. Um, but, uh, we'll see. Ubisoft is not holding a very good track record with me over the past year. <laughs> uh, everyone remember Far Cry Primal? Yeah, me neither. Did that, did that even get DLC? Did they do anything with that? Because, holy shit, it was so bad. There we go. Good old crossbow. How did I... How did I not see that coming? Um, another game that's coming out, uh, confirmed, is Ace Combat 7, which there's probably a lot of people like, what the fuck is that? Why should I care? Um, last time I played an Ace Combat game was on PlayStation 2. Was it 2? Yeah, it was 2. Um... But was, no, I think Ace Combat, I got on 360, was one of my first games too, so, unless, there was a, there was a game called Something Something, Secret Missions of World War II, where you flew planes. I don't know if it was an Ace Combat game or not, um, but it took place in World War II, and it was on Xbox 360, I'll, I'll look it up, but, um, I for sure played one on PlayStation 2 in Ace Combat, I think it was like 3, um, you know, modern. And, um, I liked it a lot. I've, you know, it wasn't super simulator heavy, but it was, it gave you more freedom. It allowed you to, you know, use all the, you know, the ailerons and the dude pitching y'all and all that, th you know, and back in the day when it was kind of shit on controllers, it would very much lock you out of most of the controls. So I, I liked it a lot. Uh, got a more PC esque experience. Oh man, fucking expired already. Did he leave? That's, that sucks. Um, so I'm happy to hear that it's returning and coming on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4. I believe the devs said that they're not ruling out Switch yet, which would be pretty cool. Like, I'm not, it's not something I'm dead set on having, but they could implement Gyro and that kind of shit on a portable platform. That might be something to pick up. It might be worthy. So, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm happy for Ace Combat. I kind of miss that game. At least, you know that genre even just not super heavy flight sim but you know something better than battlefield would be nice every now and then because I'm, I'm kind of a plane nut i like i like guns a lot i like planes um not huge on much else as far as military 
memorabilia goes, but but those two things, yeah, I could I could get into another Ace Combat. Oh, well, this is wonderful. I uh, I quit to see there's a different server because um, I wanted to play as Americans. Looks like that's not gonna happen because there's one server. <laughs> sitting at a beautiful 43 out of 64 and that's the only people playing so that's good oh wow actually I actually have a martini henry skin i don't have this weapon yet uh it's also op as shit but it's the only one that the um ottomans realistically use so that's the one you get which is cool i like that aspect of this game mode um this is a ridiculous rifle it had so many chambers um one of the one of them is over a 50 caliber of course it didn't have nearly the kinetic energy that modern one does but still it's a fucking half an inch bullet hitting you um nintendo switch i know i've been talking about switch all the fucking time and i know it it's not going to stop until well after it comes out but um they did a hands-on presentation another one uh, kind of a event uh, a bunch of youtubers going to and that sort of thing um, impressions are exactly what I expected. People who were excited for it love it even more and can't wait. Um, people who are Debbie Downers continue generally to be Debbie Downers. But for the most part, um, I think the impression was very positive. Um, some, you know, some random stuff that Nintendo is really not good about touching on as far as technical aspects. Um, I think a lot of people did a good job about talking about those things. Um, including how the switch is docked. So there's like two little nubs um, on this piece of plastic that. Oh god, this is this is rough, guys. I'm I'm a little scared right now. Um, oh yeah, plant this, plant this shit. Oh, that was smart. That was really smart. I'll give you that one. I will give you that one. Two percent. Fucking kill me. Um. But yeah, like how the how the switch is actually docked, so you know everyone knows it's like a USB C port on the switch. So there'd have to be a male connector on the dock. It's like okay, well fuck, can't you hurt that? Um, they're smart by having a basically what looks like a spring loaded cover on the outside of it, and two little nubs that stick up, and then would engage into the switch. So you have to put it in perfectly, or it's not going in the dock at all. Um, and then that would push it down and line it up with the port, protecting the port in the process. So I think that's a good design uh, decision. There are a couple other things like that that um, kind of put my mind at rest. Like, oh my god, you know, am I going to hurt this thing, blah, blah, blah. Um, they confirmed that the battery is not user changeable. And by that, they mean, you know, you're going to lose your warranty if you do. Um, they can you know they can replace it if it something does damage it or you know you've just played it so damn much that it's dying um for for a cost which means that if you know what you're doing and you read an i fix it forum you can probably do it yourself and just avoid the warranty if you don't care um i doubt i'll ever put in enough hours to where battery life is going to become a major concern but uh it is a good thing to know that it's not completely wrecked uh, it's something you generally don't have to worry about with normal, non-handheld handheld consoles. You know, it's like, oh god, the Xbox One battery is down. Oh wait, it doesn't have a battery. Oh, good, we can just replace the AC power, you know. So, <laughs> I always find it funny when you hit the horses. It's like, I always wonder if you could repair them, like give them a bag of oops. Um, yeah, a couple other things like that. I think one of the things I found most interesting were just people that didn't realize how small it is. Um, and to be fair, it took me, Oh God, this thing is so ugly. It took me a bunch of comparison photos to realize that this, it is tiny. Um, you know, it, people are like, Oh my God, I didn't realize that the joy cons were smaller than game boy micros in your hand. I didn't realize that the screen is barely bigger than a Samsung galaxy seven note. Um, and they are, but, you know, that's 6.2 inches. That's, you know, the exact dimensions they put it. But, you know, just by seeing the commercials and stuff, people expect it to be bigger. And um, that's cool that it is smaller and that much more portable to me. Um, some people might not like that they're getting less volume for what they pay for, but, I you know, more portability is always a good thing. Uh, okay, that kind of freaked me out that it was moving. I didn't, <laughs> didn't realize someone had gotten in there. Um, a couple other things... Um, like people looked into loading times and you know time to load your save file in certain games. Um, 
for instance, Breath of the Wild from launching it to the main menu, and of course it was a it was obviously a standalone a, or a stand-in main menu. There's no way it was finalized because it was just for the demo, very small vertical slice of the game map. Um, but it took about I think seven. 10, 7, 10 seconds or something like that to get to the main menu, and then less than 30, about 22, I think, seconds, 24, to uh, to load your file. So not blazing fast, but not bad at all either. It didn't, you know, it doesn't take much less time to load Ocarina of Time on 2DS, and it certainly, can I deploy anywhere, please? That'd be sweet. Um, and certainly comparable with, current generation RPG load times, which some of them get abysmal on console. Um, but I think that's something most people come to terms with because you can get an SSD on PC and alleviate that. And even if you do put an SSD in a console, which people, people have done, it's still not nearly as fast because it's the, you know, the bus speeds and all that just aren't comparable. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You know, I'm happy with, with the stuff that's coming out, nothing is, it's not a new generation of speed or anything, but um, it's not going to hamper me. And quite frankly, I'm de used to dealing with Skyrim and all that kind of stuff. Usually I'll boot it up and then go piss or grab a drink and come back and my character's ready to go anyway. That's probably what I'll end up doing with Legend of Zelda. So, um, that's a good thing. And I didn't realize that the grip that comes with the console is still passing through your battery level. So I thought the charging grip was the only one that showed your battery battery level. Um, but the one that ships with the console actually does have the pass-through, which is nice. It just doesn't have a charging port, which makes me really confused as to why they didn't just include the damn charging port one. Like, it's not necess you know, a, necess a necessity, um, but it's like, you know, you had to have some amount of hardware to show that why not just add another fucking power plug. It could not have been that much more expensive. Um, whereas Xbox One controllers designed around a AA battery, that battery pack probably costs, a, you know, not a significant amount by any means, but, you know, they can sell it for 20 bucks. I can understand that. But damn, a whole other grip for 30 when all you're doing is missing two power leads? Wow. <laughs> That's a little ridiculous. So, interesting tidbit of information there. Um... Some people are speculating after seeing it that you could absolutely just do a pass-through power splitter cable without having to use the dock. Um, probably not um, be as elegant as the dock, but if you are if you don't want to spend $90 on one in just like a portable way, wow, that is a long distance. Um, ow. Then, uh, you know, oh, wow, rocket gun off of that? I had no idea you could do that. That's badass. But... Uh, yeah, if you want a less elegant solution and just want to have a portable, you know, hook up to TV, you could probably do it. Now, whether or not it works out of the box, if you got to do a little bit of finagling, or if it would, if it would give a native performance since it's, you know, powered and all, you know, who knows. But um, I have a feeling it's not that complex. You know, I don't think that dock is a very magical thing. I think the we or the <laughs> we. Uh, thank God they're not calling it a Wii something. I just think the Switch is programmed to recognize whenever it's getting power um, or has a certain type of cable connected to it. It's like, all right, pass through the video, run the game in this settings, and because of that, because you have power, will allow the the um, the clock speed of the GPU to double or whatever they're doing. So you could probably get around their little... Um, special dock if if you wanted to uh, and I'm not seeing shit that I can actually shoot at this thing's really good for vehicles but as you can see not a whole lot of vehicles on this map besides uh, bikes die bro holy shit <laughs> this train is not gonna last long I have a feeling not not the power of the dreadnought no doubt about it. And, um, can we... Why are we rolling through D? Cap, we're just gonna die. This is stupid. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. It's pretty dead as far as, you know, we're in that, um, post-CES season where everything is just dead and abysmal and 
no news is coming out. Still, I think PAX South went on, and I'm hoping for some PAX East GPU announcements from NVIDIA. Um, but that's about it. Uh, one other notable thing is that Overwatch just had its 25th million player registered, which is pretty impressive. I still don't understand why that game's so popular, other than the fact that Blizzard made it, and it's a TF2 spiritual successor um, with a little bit more action going on. Dude, what the fuck are we doing? Back up, you idiot. Um, but, you know, hey, it ain't for me. I don't get it. Whatever. But... At least they're seeing some some success. I still I'm still like bitter about Diablo. <laughs> I feel like it's like that should be Diablo right now, um, instead of them constantly like. Why does this thing suck so much? Jesus, you see that? That's a lot of hits and not a whole lot of not a whole lot of action going on. What are we doing, dude? Like, can we cap something, please? <laughs> Jesus Christ! All we're doing is just. Going back and forth, this is literally, you guys are watching an on, on rail shooter, and about 2% of your uh, screen real estate is actually shown. Uh, last significant thing I saw was that the, oh yeah, that's all mines. Run right through them. That's good. That's, you know, I'm getting off of this retarded train. Uh, but the the title of Star Wars Episode Eight has been confirmed to be The Last Jedi. Um, whatever that means, who knows? I'm assuming it's about Luke. But it wouldn't surprise me if they kill off Luke and, uh, you know, then it's Rey's the last Jedi, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but that's coming whenever it's happening, I guess. That makes it 2018 that's coming out. So, yeah. Star Wars fans like me, rejoice. We gotta, you know, it's coming. I'm still interested to see what they do with Carrie Fisher, but another, another topic for another day. But yeah, like I said, that's about it in terms of entertainment and game stuff that I have a remote interest in. And there we go, and boom. All right. Well, that was that was beautiful. Hey, Krieger? Krieger? Okay, thank you. Thank you, good sir. Oh my god, it's a cluster over here. This is a slow-moving projectile, if you guys have noticed. I'm not really crazy about the Martini Henry. <laughs> uh, it's definitely powerful. I can see why people were destroying it, or were destroying me with it. But, um, yeah, not exactly thrilled about the level 10 scout weapon. Um, yeah, this will probably, this is going to be a shorter off the leash. So I'm guess, I guess I'm glad I made the, the last one that much longer than I expected. So yeah, we'll probably end it here. Um, thanks for watching. We will see you next week in probably this possibly dog pound, depending on our, uh, recording schedule. Like I said, stay tuned for some return of, classic series um in a more refined manner as well as some new content altogether and um hopefully you can put up with me rambling about the switch until it comes out and i do a proper review of it because i'm, I'm still pretty excited about that thing <laughs> all right thanks for watching we'll see you next week bye bye boom